Hello. Mr. Haggard. Hello. Kix Brooks. Yeah. Hey, Kix. How you doing, Merle? Well, this is kind of overwhelming what all is going on for me here. <laughs> Merle, you can't be surprised now. You're the... You and Willie are last men standing now, the the great American outlaw <laughs> heroes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we come from a time when it was legal to be outlawed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, I and and I've always you you know what a fan I am of yours, but you've never been that guy who just jumps out of his seat and goes crazy when he won awards and stuff as many as you've won in fact i distinctly remember you walking up on one particular occasion and saying thank you and walking off the stage which i bet i bet a lot of producers wish more people would do that but is there is there an award really that and you've always been gracious i don't mean that in the wrong way but has there really been one of those awards that you've won and you kind of thought to yourself, wow, that's pretty cool? Well, you know, that Kennedy Art Center Award, mm. you know, because it comes from people that aren't normally, don't normally identify with our music. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, and it's... Uh, I think it may be one of the most honest awards because of that. Yeah, that was a real classy that's deal a, too. That's that's a real important uh, one, I think. And it, you know, they're all important. They they all come from the hearts of the people in the business, and so it's uh, you know, anytime somebody goes to the trouble to draw a crowd to give you something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's gonna be a pay attention. that's gonna be a fun <laughs> night, buddy. When you wake up in the morning, what's the thing you most look forward to now? Well, I I probably subconsciously wake up with with the hopes that I'll be able to write Stardust, you know. But hell, it's already been written, <laughs> you know. But that's you know <laughs> a great song, right? A great song today. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the, that's the that's the best thing I can hope for, and and uh, Lord give me the strength to stay with it till sundown. You know. <laughs> Do you still get up and grab a guitar sometimes in the mornings and try and make something rhyme? Not as much as I should. Yeah, I know that and, feeling. Uh, you know, it's I got one sitting right behind me that I haven't touched in two weeks, and I'm going back to work. Uh, uh, to, uh, Tuesday, and so uh, I'm going to get it out here today or tomorrow and, and uh, see if I can find G chord. <laughs> and, <laughs> I remember I don't, you. Uh, I don't play as I don't play as much as I should, and uh, I do ten days a month, which you know is about time I travel back and forth from Northern California is about fifteen days, you know. I remember you telling me one time when we were going to do a show somewhere that you were nervous because you hadn't been playing your guitar enough. And you, you've kind of always considered yourself, and you have been a, a great guitar player over the years, but you still feel a responsibility to the guitar as, as much as those songs in your voice? <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm going to be 77, and it's... It, and the, the, uh, what used to be enjoyable is now a chore. You know, it's it's hard to play that son of a bitch, <laughs> and uh, it's not easy. And I still want to do it. I still don't. I don't want to walk out there and and be a wimp. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm going to be a wimp, stay at, stay at home, stay yeah. out of sight. So it's very important to me to walk out and be able to at least uh, fake it. <laughs> till you get back in in practice, you know. Well, there's, you know, you're, obviously you have this great catalog of songs. And, you know, I think, I think Cash kind of, you know, he's sort of, in his later years, he found a different place as far as being an artist and a performer. Uh, you know, he didn't sing like he did when he was younger. And, and he never, you know, really relied that much on the guitar, but... 
he found a place in his in his heart and his soul that I think people are realizing now. It it really shined through. Is I mean, what do you what do you focus on when you when you think about now? Okay, and you just we're just talking about. So maybe you physically, you know, don't have the chops that you had back then. But what's that one thing that you know when you come to the stage besides the fact that obviously you're Merle Haggard, that that you're going to put on them and they're going to take away something and go that wasn't just an old guy trying to do it that was really special well the first thing i don't do kicks is worry about it i don't i don't plan anything and and i just meet the moment as it happens and, mm-hmm. and uh try to <clears throat> have enough songs to turn to in case you run out of things to say or vice versa <laughs> you know and uh be honest and uh, and you know I think I think the most funny things are things that happen at the moment. <laughs> you know you can't repeat them. I've tried to. I've, I've had something just tear a crowd completely up and, <laughs> and use it the next night, and they didn't even respond. <laughs> <laughs> so it don't work. <laughs> so I just. I just hit I just hit the stage with those songs you're talking about mm-hmm. and, a, and a real good group. Mm-hmm. I've got the best band right now that I've ever had. And my son is playing lead guitar and he's playing like Reggie Young and Grady Martin and Roy Nichols and James Burton all and John Mayer. Wow. That's got to make you proud. You know. I I can't believe it. <laughs> and it, it, hey, the, the the Grammy band asked him to play guitar in their in their in their band this year. That's so cool. What God Almighty! And I, you know, I'm <laughs> sitting here in amazed, uh, amazed with it all. <laughs> I, mean, I always wanted to play guitar. Oh, uh, you have but more. This, this kid's actually playing guitar. <laughs> Shoot, man, you're a great player, Merle. I've always admired how you played. <clears throat> And you've always had great bands, so that's that's cool to hear you say that. I know you're not just saying it because you're his dad, but that's that's got to be fun for you guys to be on stage together. Well, we got Floyd Domino on piano. Uh, he's the best out of Texas. We got a kid uh, from Portland, Oregon, Renato Caranto, who's the greatest horn player I've ever heard in my life. I I, I can't tell you. It's unbelievable. And, uh... You know, you've always had horns. <laughs> what, what what got you into... I remember seeing you in Nashville years ago, and you had a had a great horn section. Where's that come from? Is that is that a West Coast kind of Mexico coming up mariachi thing? Or what, what inspired you to well, get we, horns into country? I ran into Don Markham early on in my career. He, he and I played together <clears throat> from... The late fifties, all the way into, he retired last year. But it was his. He was able to play in the right keys. He he could play in, in G and and uh, if necessary, play in F sharp. And most horn players can't do that. Mm-hmm. They, they won't even attempt it. They'll turn around and walk off stage. <laughs> but uh, once in a while, you run onto a guy like working with me right now. That's I, I don't I don't understand how this guy plays. This guy knocks me out every time he hits it. <laughs> knocks me down. And it just it you know, the the way to learn to play guitar is listen to horn players. And uh and I got one of the greatest I've ever heard working with me right now and, the, and our rhythm section is just so good. We got <clears throat> and it's a, it's a pleasure for an old guy to finally succeed in one area, which was to build an original van that uh, knocked me out, you know. That's awesome. Let me can I ask you something totally off the subject? Is I keep hearing this story about did you have a houseboat that had a fishing hole in the middle of the living room or something? I must I must admit that you're telling the truth. <laughs> Tell me about that. I mean, I got a house, but that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Well, we we put a 
we we lived on Lake Shasta out there for eight years, and, and this we had this oh, it's about a four foot diameter piece of glass that you could take out of the floor and, and fish during the winter, sit by the front room of the houseboat, and uh, hell, we I've called four pound rainbow out of there. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's amazing the stuff we have that comes and goes over the years. I guess. Well, you know, we're we're special. We, we've been treated special. The Lord has blessed us so much. And all you and I have to do is show up and be nice. You know. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, bring a little entertainment, but. Well, you, you bring all you can. Yeah. What's What's the coolest uh, acoustic guitar that that you ever had? What's the best sounding boxer that you wrote the most songs on? It's sitting right behind me. I got a, a triple out forty five uh, that uh, was sitting behind me. Where's my guitar at? Somebody stole your Martin. <laughs> Where's my guitar? Triple 45, uh, a gut string. Oh, uh, that cool. I had built in 1970. And it's just, uh, it's been on, it was on Always Wanting You, the guitar I played the lead on on that. Cool. And it's been on, been on more than one number one record. And it just sat here and aged uh, like me. <laughs> and, uh, it's a it's a one of them guitars that you don't even need to pick with, you know, you can just it kind of plays itself almost. What do you think of these other artists this like this tribute album that's coming out? I was just listening to it and there's some great performances. Hauser singing uh, Ramblin' Fever, good grief that guy can sing. He's a great guy too, but um Boy, how- no kidding. Uh, and and just uh I'm really Great performers on there, including my son. Absolutely. And uh, the uh, fighting side of me was extremely good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, makeup and faded blue jeans. All right. It's really good. And uh, the uh, to uh, pick it apart, you know, is would be the wrong thing to do. It's just yeah. everybody's uh, was a special contribution a performance center and it feels that way to me you know it's always seemed like before ronnie and i got together you know i wrote songs up here for a living for about 10 years and it it, uh, it seems like i'm you'd probably agree kind of the greatest compliment when somebody else records your songs you know and kind of hangs their career on what you're doing is there one song or one performance? I mean, your songs have been recorded by so many people, uh, so many different genres. Was, was there one performance of one of your songs where it, it really, really got to you and you went, wow, mm-hmm? Well, I think George Strait, Strait really nailed uh, uh, Seashores of Old Mexico. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he got a, a hell of a record on that. And uh, Alan Jackson nailed a couple of mine, you know, for my for my for my liking. You yeah, know. right. Well, that's what matters. You know, and 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 Willie Nelson did a couple uh-huh. cuts on Ramblin' Fever too. It was just recently. It's really good. But I'm going to tell you who knocked me out the most of anybody is Susie Boggess. Have you heard her tribute album to me? She done it's her newest thing right now. I have not, but I'll go get it. Well, you go get it and get get ready to be knocked down. Oh, yeah? It is good. Cool. Susie's a good singer. Do you know? Well, she does what is she? Hey, she, she makes... A new song out of Stay and Drink. She makes it a woman's song. Oh, I can't wait to hear she that. Said you could be holding me tonight. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Do you know the first year that Ronnie and I were in business, when we were up for, we were up for New Artist of the Year, and Susie Boggess won, 
And I remember my dad going, who in the heck is Susie Boggess? And I said, she is really good, Pops. Believe me, she's a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is. Uh, she uh, she does Tonight the Bottle Let Me Down. Oh, cool. And Stay Here and Drink. And I've never heard a woman do either one of them. And she actually just it didn't change any words and just rewrote it. Cool so to speak, uh-huh. and made a woman's song out of them. That's Both great. of them, they don't sound like women's songs. Ronnie and I did. turned in some it's around and, and got a great record on on both of them. That is cool. We and did the, uh, the, Tonight the, the Bottle the, Let Me Down on some tribute record. Yeah. I love that song. And Garth Brooks did it on on the, on this uh, working man poet album and too bad you hadn't written any hits merle golly <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know if if you remember me saying you know you and willie had a thing going with with poncho and lefty too and y- y'all just sang one dadgum song we sang for 20 years together merle <laughs> well we sang we sang 40 other songs and only one of them you remember so <laughs> <laughs> it, it, there's the, there's the power of the song. Yeah, Poncho and Lefty was was a one of those uh, that you pray for. Yeah, you know Willie found that thing on a Emmy Lou Harris record, and we had all of our records made, and it was five in the morning, and I'd been up five days, and he brought that song in me about five in the morning. And he said, I got I got this off of an Emily Harris record. He said, I think I found this a, an Oki from Muskogee. Uh-huh. And boy, he was he was right. Man. That that song is the uh, Dirk Bentley thing and and uh, Luke Bryan. Uh huh. They, they they did it on this this twenty song tribute to us. Yeah. And it's it's going to be a smash again. It's a great song. I think. Towns Van Zandt, great writer, huh? Absolutely. His stuff was different, no doubt about it. Well, Merle, I'm not going to keep you all day as much as I love catching up with you. Well, listen and- to me. You guys go to record, call me, and give me the courtesy call of, give, uh, of uh, presenting you with a song. I think you know probably for both of us the greatest honor that we had in our entire career was you coming out and playing with us. Thank you so much for well, doing that. It meant it, the world to both it, of us to have you out there. Well, it was, it was it was nice to be wanted, and I enjoyed it as much as you guys did. So back at you. All right. Well, thank you. You take care of yourself, and absolutely, if we do it, We'll have to have us a Haggard song in there, no doubt about it. All right, well, call me. Take and, care, uh, and I'll hopefully see, to get to say, hey, uh, I'll be out in Las Vegas, and uh, hopefully I'll get to see you out there. We'll we'll get to talk. All right. Good deal. Take care, Merle. Talk. Bye-bye. Bye.